No more beeping! Hello, my friends. I'm very happy today. Um, so you know that if those of you who've watched my channel for, well, my old channel now, this channel for a while, you would always periodically hear this beep in the background. It would drive me nuts. I've tried to edit it out as much as I can but over the years, but it's crazy, insane. And recently I thought about it, maybe it's a battery issue. Well, our power went out like a, a, on the block. And it finally fried the battery. So, I ended up ordering a new one. And, uh, no more beeping. Turns out the battery should have been switched out twice by now. Um, if it's of like a five year shelf life, with every few months you're supposed to charge it. That has been going on. But yeah, apparently, yeah, we've had the same battery for the past oh, 11 years, which is why for a long time it's been beeping. Well, no more beeping. Oh, no more beeping. And anyway, I, uh, our hope is also because it isn't a weird, funky, like low powered battery. We won't have these Wi Fi outages that we tend to have periodically throughout the house ever so often. Also, I think our Wi Fi might be a bit a little stronger now that we have, I argue it is, now that we have a nice fresh battery in there. Um, any other announcements? No, just for those of you who knew the channel. This channel, Beanspot Reactions, is kind of a backup channel and now a main channel for the anime, not the anime, for my original channel, channel Brianna C Reacts, which explains the intro. Uh, so in January, I'm going to switch over the intro to something new, uh, give you more time to record some more footage and figure some things out. I also want to incorporate some animations, kind of make it more fun dynamic. I have to work with my sister about that. Also, if you go to uh, my channel, please check out the banner that's used on my channel. My sister designed that. It's very, very cute. But Bean Sprout Reactions, uh, it used to be Brianna Reacts. Again, that's why I hit the old intro. Um, but all the videos in terms of anime that I've recorded, uh, give or take a few exceptions, are being are slowly going to be reposted back to uh, YouTube. So all the old anime that I reacted to, with the exception of thou the kind of like how I any anime that I record kind of the old style, which is like like how I, I used to record my live action videos with chunks and pieces. All the old videos that um, kind of are now in the Tiubu style, which I'm gonna call, with no sound, partial image on YouTube, will be posted back up here. Those that aren't in the older style are gonna remain on this shoot. Now, I never had any problems with Dumbo na Kilimutero, even though it's edited in the older style. So I might try to repost those, but if I get any copyright claims, I'm immediately going to take it off and just keep it on the dirt shoot. So slowly I'm going to have to post my old anime videos on there that I haven't yet. So unfortunately, my bitch is kind of all over the place um, in terms of postings, but little by little I'm going to post my animes back up there. Live action shows, how, well, how's that going to happen? Probably not going to be for a little while. Um, right now I need to kind of... Things are kind of chaotic. Um, a rhythm is starting to settle now that uh, my family member has been home for just two weeks. But that's still a lot of work I have to get done. So I'm trying to work on that and figure out how to get the live actions done. The new st what, ooh, what new editing style I need to do. How much video I can and can't show. Stuff like that. My dog. Anyway, so that's kind of where that is. But anime will continue on as normal. Also, I do have a Patreon, so go check that out. Um, a lot of my older videos that used to be on YouTube, like my old um, live action ones, like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Birds of Prey, and some of the older ones are going to be available for like the middle tier patrons, and then shows that I'm still in the middle of, like even though I've mostly finished Wonder Woman, I will finish it, I will. Um, that will be posted on the bottom tier, just because I still technically have not done that, finished that one. 
a lot of the old seasons, the past seasons I've done of Supergirl, like seasons three and four will only be for like middle tier for a while, and then I'll go back down to one tier. So there's still certain ways I gotta figure out how to do Patreon, but I figured out how to do it. So now I know like I know what to use, when to use, where to use it. It's just about kind of slowly getting these things back up and on one form or another. Stop it, my dog's there. Anyway. I don't know why she, oh my gosh, she probably wants it out. Anyway, I'm going to just wrap this up. The second half of the season is very fun. We have a war ahead of us, and unfortunately, because of this war that's coming, we've seen bit by bit by bit how the teenagers, the kids, have had to have training that, as adults, so that way they can prepare because the war makes no exceptions. Not only will the adults be attacked, which you see in the intro with the adults, and the kids kind of coming up in front of them. Where it's like the adults will do their best to kind of keep the kids out of fire and kind of again remain to be like the strong teachers and protectors as they've been throughout, you know, all the goodies have been throughout the, the entire series. But they like Endeavor said, I can't look at you as kids, I can't look at you as students, I look at you as heroes because what's coming next will only treat you as more such. And it doesn't matter that you're under 18, it doesn't matter how old you are, if you have the ability to fight, they will come for you and they will kill you. So war is coming because of that. They unfortunately have to train the kids up. So I am very excited. Uh, we still have some a little bit of filler, like flashback stuff, but not as obnoxious as the first half of the season. So it's gonna be really, really fun. Also, um, hopefully, eventually, we'll before the series. Um, in terms of plans of what's gonna follow, <sighs> one uh, after I finish Mob Psycho 100 and My Hero Academia Season 5, I need to figure out well, what's next. So I actually don't know what series to do next. So I know that I want to follow like Sound Euphonium with K-On, but I'm to start at Sound Euphonium. So there's still more material to work off of that. I am almost, I'm, I'm going to be starting Season 2 soon of um, Mob Psycho and we'll be finishing up Season 5 soon of this show. So... Please leave comments, let me know what should be the show next, and I'll kind of look at what my recommendations were before, kind of look what people already recommended to me, and kind of pick what the top four I'm interested in, and then obviously I'll put a poll on Patreon. Patrons have um, more weight to their vote, even though I only have seven of them right now, <laughs> as of this video. Uh, but I also will try, until I can get a community page, I'm just going to have to ask you guys, hey, here's the comment. And then at the beginning of each video, I'll say, hey, these are the four anime I'm looking at, too. Please comment which one I should do next, because that would be really helpful. Uh, because until I get a new community page, when I get a certain amount of subscribers on this channel, I can't really poll people, unfortunately. Anyway, I've driven on too long. There's no sound. Partial image on the YouTube version. There's a picture version below. Feel free to click the link. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So are we getting a flashback then? About when he invites them? A little bit, yeah. Okay, cool. Winter vacation do hero work cities. I suspect part of the reason that All Might stayed at number one, because one, he's been in for a long time, and two, he's just started to unlikable. I think if Endeavor was more likable, he may have been more of a contender for number one. And I know, I know Endeavor feels like he only gets number one because All Might's gone. That's kind of true, but I'm exhausted. Even Baku was like, <gasps> Oh, I was freaking out! This episode focuses on them! Yes! Oh, uh, those are, I think those are two of his three best friends. I think he has three best friends. <laughs> You're a Raka. Sue? Oh, it's a new costume? Oh, it's the. Okay, I see now. No, oh, she looks really cute. Okay, is it because your boyfriend had a new one? Or you want something a bit more helpful and to like, as a way to help him. 
<laughs> Sunu is the truth. Oh, there's a whole bunch of girls hanging out. It's super cute. They are. <laughs> no. It's a very different reaction between the first day with Endeavor, which is like, ah, oh, he's like a hardworking dude, like a dude. Especially Endeavor. And these three girls joining these other women, they're just like, we're gonna have sweets and tea. We're gonna have a cute little welcome party. <laughs> Could you imagine Endeavor <laughs> sitting with a little cup of tea? <laughs> A little cake saying welcome to the agency. <laughs> I'm so tickled by that. I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, it's such a boy thing and a girl thing like this. I'm excited to kind of look into more of the villains. I wonder if that hood guy, I'm trying to look at like their hands to see if he was the computer one or the one that's closest to us. Like, that was the guy who was, like, selling them. Like, he was the villain's version. Excuse me, of the hero support tech. If he was the one doing the weird night eye finger thing. You know, part of him as a reactor, you, you do approach things with a somewhat critical eye. You kind of can't help it. But at the same time... It's just sitting back and just watching it. It's still a fun time. You know, I'm not a little bit going like, ugh. You know, like, for instance, I would drag a question like fashion. Hmm. Ah, oh, I bet this where this is going, going. Okay. Red Riot. Yeah, he... Yeah, but also uncontrollable. Hmm. Hmm, so they might have... Oh, interesting. Yeah, probably. Yeah, serious stuff ahead of them, for sure. And this is where... She is looking at it. Ah, stop him. No, and he, he, I forgot he does that. He can't. Oh, shoot. He's using the drug. Oh, gosh, makes his eyes kind of pink and stuff. It's like a smoke screen. That's bad. It's cool to be reminded there are heroes not only in the cities, but are on the edge of the countries too, that are water focused. Which is bad. Bad for them and bad for the water if it spills in it. Where'd the ship go though? I wonder if they I wonder if they switched directions and they stayed in there. This is where Sue and Yurako come in.
because she can fly. And she's worked with Southgate because she has uh, experience. <sighs> hmm. Oh, wait, no. No, I like, we're halfway? No, we're not. Okay. Interesting. So it has a little town, it has it has like a flight strip, so it's kind of a series of islands then. Does are those is there something like that with Japan? Do they have like a uh no, stop that. <laughs> oh that's cute. He really did. He was so cool. It's funny how he tries to be so cute, but he is not. Yeah, they face something really serious versus some of her friends are like not so much. Hmm. This is a cute episode, isn't it? But it's gonna get serious right now. Stop that. Why do the young ones think it's cute? Mm. But your gravity and Rikyu would be perfect for this guy. Oh, she can fly too. Are they in... What is he planning? Hmm. He wants the kids to have fun while they can. Hmm. Of course, the water girls got to explore the water. Though, okay, it makes sense that Najiri and Hiravati Yuraka would be with the dragon. But I guess Saki wasn't taking on any interns this year, so that's how she ended up being- What did she cook? What did she cook? What did they cook? Oh my gosh. But, maybe because, you know, Tsu needed something, so they asked her if she could join too. Oh, they're still in their hero costume. Yes, because they're all very young. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I like that. Then again, like this is a really fun, fluffy episode, but it's gonna change, isn't it, when night falls? Hmm. Gosh, it's a huge cargo. Oof. Oh, pause. Okay. So. Just like Japanese food, that's it. Okay. So she did update her costume to be, I guess, more able to be helpful to Neko, which is super cute and sweet. I can't wait to see what she can actually do with it. I hope we see that this episode. Um... So Trigger maybe is a more refined version. There's the booster, but that booster was like so intense, but you were also out of control. Now the Trigger works like a drug. You see the pink in their eyes kind of affecting them and they're with like probably um, being bloodshot and kind of like maybe like really getting their blood motivated or, or infecting it. Oh, I didn't see the blood, so blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, point is maybe it's a bit more refined and maybe it's, it works like the booster, but it also maybe for a shorter period of time and you maybe have a bit more control of it versus the booster which was for a longer period of time and kind of insane this guy had no control to some degree it took a lot out of our dear red riot to kind of take the, that dude out 
Um, whose powers were similar to the creepy teeth person. Anyway, um, it is really sweet and cute that we, I guess, the girls get to have, like, a fun time. <laughs> the boys, not so much. But they do get to kind of enjoy, you know, like you said, give them something to remember that they are protecting. Not necessarily frivolity, but a life of peace. Um, so I remember hearing there's a difference between keeping peace and having peace. You can try to keep the peace, but it's really just a ceasefire. And we're kind of experiencing that a lot within the politics right now is that there is no peace right now. It's, it's full-blown political insanity. In order to have peace, sometimes you must make war. Um, and these villains want the earth, the world to be molded into their twisted vision. And that's what we're getting, even on, again, also on a political spectrum, uh, at least in the States and other countries too, is that it's more of one worldview versus another worldview. And they're trying to, and each of these worldviews are pushing against each other, trying to mold the world into their vision. The question is, which one is the one that is actually good for people and not about controlling people? And about it causing chaos and just being the tyrants that these villains are going to be. And you have to kind of poke and prod and, and sometimes on the surface level, especially with the villains and some other worldviews, is that you can see like, oh, it's evil. Um, but you're also, in today's age, you're, you know, people are going to call good evil and evil good. So you have to have a objective, solid foundation in order to be able to say what's evil and what's not. Um, and what is true and what is not, and what's evil and what's not, is independent on a political party, or what country you're in, or how old you are. It is absolute. It was true, it was good in the past, it was evil, it was false in the past, it's going to be the same now, the same then. It's absolute. So, where am I going with this? Um, what he's trying to show here is that you know, these things, kids can get, enjoy being kids. Young adults can enjoy, to a degree, having the kind of moments of lightness and frivolity. Um, when you do have a piece that is come from being able to fight the good fight and, you know, to make war, so to speak. And with you, a battle, a war is coming. You know, it's been brewing and brewing for a while. And it's, we've experienced major battles. Some have been connected, some of them not so much. But as we experience these major battles, now it's an organized army, a true war. Like they're prepping for a planned attack that'll kickstart a major like a war, and then hopefully, in their villain's eyes, bring about control on them. So, yeah, my apologies. I am hoping. Um, that's why he's kind of doing this for the kids. But now that I'm like thinking about it, I also kind of realize, I hope, I know that the manga has an offshoot called Vigilantes that I think Razorhead's featured in that one. So I would also love to see, I would love to see more Vigilantes actually in the, in the anime if possible. Not like, oh, I'm forgetting his name, the hero killer, Strain, Strain, I think. Um, not like an actual evil vigilante, but a vigilante who is trying to do the right thing, but doesn't have a license. So I would like to see that, because I suspect with more and more villains popping up, that more and more vigilantes would start popping up as well to kind of combat it. And someone would be really helpful and someone would be useless. Also, some of you might be old enough, some of you might not be. Do you remember there was this huge thing back, I think, when I was in high school, maybe? or early college, of these people, these adults dressed up as superheroes. Some of them had, you know, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. Some of them had their own unique costumes. They weren't actually fighting crime. They were just going around patrolling neighborhoods. I don't know if people did that really much anymore, but that was a thing. I remember that. I kind of like to see that. <sighs> likes jello. I bet she likes green jello. Okay. 
makes me wonder that he has the guys dressed up as Navy guys, Navy uniforms, if he used to be military. It's okay he has a military vibe to him. That's cool. That is such a cool quirk. It's freaking amazing. Just wish you could She's cool. Najeri Surge. Her flying is energy based. Her life force. Mmm. I'm sure she gets weakened though and has to replenish it. Like how sometimes Yuraka gets tired too. Or like Momo needs to replenish herself. Spotted seal. He's <laughs> just a spotted seal. I wonder how Fro DP can go with Froppy on his back, though. I like how he's doing, like, the, yeah, those kind of ones. It is actually, it's way faster if you're doing the two legs like this, um, than if you're doing this. Oh, even her voice changes when she turns to a dragon, because she's bigger now. Mm. That's cool. They are so cool. I wanted to get... It's not quite dark yet. It's not even dark yet. The sun's just setting. Froppy can hold her, um, her breath for a long time, too. Oh, you know what's cool about this? She, she can hear his sonar. So they don't actually have to, to, um, they don't have to communicate via technology, which might be picked up on other ships. It's just his sonar and her ears. Oh, maybe because it's not dark out and they can easily see you. I wonder if you can, if like there's only so much you can handle. Yeah, but smoke screen's only so big. They think they're safe now. And now they can't see. I <laughs> love how he does that. Oh, so it just, that's kind of gross. His like pores expand, they just put out smoke. It's kind of disgusting. And of course, oh, he's doing Morse to communicate with her. I love his boots, how he has like normal boots and then they can change into his um, flippers. Ooh, boom. He would have kind of really insane strength. Not on the woods yet. And her wings can blow away the smoke, too. That's what was under there? A plane? So did I. Everyone did. 
Sweetie! Ah, she couldn't reach it. Ooh, now we're into the skies. Dang. I know, you gotta figure out something, it's just kinda cool. <laughs> Sorry, it's just kinda funny looking. So she's helping that fly, or is she just shooting her? Oh my gosh! That was so cool. She changed her thing to only grab from a distance, but also that she could like, like it's like the shoot style. Oh my gosh! Bye bye bye. Boom. Yeah, can you fly a plane? <laughs> it's falling from the sky. Yeah, you. Oh, baby girl, pull up, pull up. Is it an auto? Something else is happening now. She is right. Jeez, what could I have something do to the other everybody? Now you giving up now. Now it's now it's the teacher telling the student asking if she's giving up versus vice versa. Ooh, they have combos. Oh, she's using her her wings to kind of shoot her. I'll put 90, dang. Kind of give it a pulse and give it a boost. It's a lot in her little body. That was nice, taking the music out. It worked. Dang, that was intense. I knew nothing bad was gonna happen to your Raka, but I didn't know, I wasn't sure what to expect. <sighs> yeah, I figured she would get sick. It's a lot in her little body. Yeah, actually kind of does. They, they shot the baggies and got what they came to get. Hmm. Hmm. Otheon, that country in Europe? I don't know if it's a real country in Europe, is it? Is it a reference to something or I'm missing? I don't know. It's not cute, no. Yeah, and I'm guessing this is a momentary piece in the anime, too. My gosh, it was such a cute episode. I love all of them. 
Wow, that was such a cute. Oh, that was such an adorable episode. So cute. So freaking cute. With the girls, and they were successful, and they're just so cute. And seeing Selkie, who's like weirdly handsome, but like cute. And Rukyu, who is pretty freaking, she's freaking cool. There's no getting around that. She's very, very cool. But the way Selkie is, it's very clear he either spends a lot of time with the military, or he is former military. Just the way he's kind of built, and the way he speaks, and the way he has his guys dressed. Also in a recognizable uniform. So if you saw them, you would be like, hey, that's Selkie's guys. That's Selkie's um, assistants, or sidekicks. But, uh, okay, so what I'm, from the looks of it, Selkie, I, th I think Sue mentioned this, Selkie wasn't taking on any interns that time, but Ryukyu was, so she had Yuravity and Najiri again, which makes sense. Or at least Najiri, probably her, has been her psychic for a while. Also Yuravity, makes sense, she flies, she floats. And then I'll, I'll, we'll also take on Froppy as well, even though she doesn't fly. Um, which, ooh... Wow, that's kind of freaky with the gold and stuff. Is this an Otheon, this weird country? He's freaky. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Bakugo is so funny with his mask pulled up on his hair. I know, there's a lot that going on. He has this big, beautiful, kind of traditional Japanese um, mansion, pretty much. Gosh, it's big. Okay, that was a pretty freaking cool episode. I loved it. I love seeing the girls work together. I love seeing them enjoy themselves. I love seeing them kick butt. I love seeing them push themselves. It was so cool to kind of see, kind of not necessarily physically speaking, but mentally how they've changed. Um, I enjoyed the fact that sometimes Uraka, her motivation to help him is an extension of the fact that she likes Deco and she respects him and wants to be there for him. So the girl loves the boy. She totally does. There's no getting around that. But she, she, I love it. it's kind of like a shoot style too, the way it shoots off like that of her hand. But also the way it shoots out, it grabs, so she's able to pull herself. So it's in a distant attack and defense, which is really freaking cool that she's developed that. And so that's, and it's also a great time that she gets to use that right away. Uh, we also, it's nice to pull away from the boys sometimes and just focus on the girls a little bit. I really, I'm really trying to find just in stores and for now, um, figures of the girls. I saw a Momo one, but it wasn't very good. And I think I saw a Yuraka one, but also wasn't very good. So I'm looking for some really nice ones where they actually look fairly good. Because the ones with the boys, they look really good. Like they look like them. I've seen some really bad Deku ones where Deku looked like a broccoli head. Uh, like it, literally a broccoli head, or he looked like a girl, or just kind of really bad ones. That one looks pretty good. I think that because oh, because <laughs> that one came actually in the anime box um, that my brother were, were, used to get, and then the two boys I got at Walmart, and they just happened to be really good figures. Uh, kind of trying to save up money right now and not um, buy too many things, but I'm trying to find some really good girl ones. Yeah, and like I said, I saw that moment one was very good. But this episode was sweet. And they mentioned how a moment of like peace or fun or reprieve. I'm guessing this episode is our moment of reprieve being 16. And the rest of the episodes are going to be boom, 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 boom. We're not going to get really. So this is not only a moment of fun and reprieve for the girls, for these characters, but for the audience as well. So it's also a foreshadowing to like... We're really gonna get to it. And of course, uh, the after credit scene was so good. And I don't remember if it's Chesterton or if it's Lewis. I think it was Chesterton that talks about beware of a tyranny that says it's there to save you or help you. 
because those are kind of some of the worst tyrannies. And we're, again, we're seeing this, in, at least in the states, in these political, this administrative, administrative state, and not necessarily like by the people for the people. It's by the bureaucrats for themselves, and it's, it's all these government overreach mandates saying you have to do this 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 no you don't that's overreach uh you don't get to do that but they're doing that they're trying to and um it's it's government overreach it's bad and so it really took these past four or five years to kind of realize just how truly how lazy or apathetic or crooked some individuals are people who've been in politics for 50 some odd years. Like, why are you still alive? Go away. But they get money and they get power. And so they claim it's for the good of the, for, for the children or something like that. And no, it's not. It's for you. You don't care about the next generation because you're going to kill all the wealth that you can. And then you're just going to die. You don't care. And so what, that's not exactly what we're seeing here, but with that character, when he says save humanity. And we see that with some of these other villains claiming to, in order to, um, they're claiming to save humanity, to do good for them. Uh, All for One was like that too. He was like trying to, you know, help the oppressed or stuff like that. No, just giving powers to those who are evil. But he's trying to twist it into being like, oh, it's for the minorities, it's for the oppressed, it's for the people who aren't in power, and blah, 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 blah. So we're seeing that, and now that the these evil people who are claiming these things are getting power, again, their claim is to save humanity. Now, I'm wondering if this side individual is connected to the League of Villains and the Liberation Army. I suspect he is. Um, because in the past we've had kind of parallel storylines of bad people doing bad things, and then kind of on the villain side, kind of reluctantly um, working together, but they really want to do their own things. They're there to do their own things. This time, though, I suspect every villain, everything that we're seeing is all interconnected. It's not um, a parallel kind of bad guys over here doing this, bad guys over here doing this. It's all kind of connected to some degree. Because this liberation ideology thing is not just in Japan, it's all over the place. Um, so that's what makes it dangerous. Because again, we're focused on how, you know, terrifying and, and we're seeing some crooked heroes who, again, probably believe that all of this is for the good of people and they're being used by the villains without realizing it's a league of villains or they know exactly who's in charge. And they, they, but they believe that what they're doing is good. Again, that's what happens when you have a worldview that's not based on any truth or goodness. It's my little squishy seal. Anyway, this episode was freaking amazing. Super cute. The action was fun. The villains were subpar, but what that wasn't the focus of them. It was the focus on the girls and kind of their growth, and sort of, again, a reminder, like, the boys are doing their things, the girls are doing their things, and also an extension reminder, just because we're not seeing Class A and Class B and all these other people, and we got reference to it last season, this, uh, last episode as well, that they are training, that, not just at UA, but also all these other schools throughout Japan, other kids, other adults, other true heroes are training and preparing for what comes next, whether they realize something, a war is coming or not. And I don't know how many heroes actually are in the know um, to what's really going on. Because Hawk says, and then Hawk suddenly told Endeavor. Probably because Endeavor's just so stubborn and he respects so many workers in the same region. But some of these other heroes might not be. But they also, Ryukyu is really smart. Selkie's smart. They know something's coming. They sense it. They kind of are prepared for it. And, um... Because of that, they're preparing their students because they're not as stubborn. They're not had. They don't have the kind of same blinders on like Endeavor does. So they are preparing their students for what comes next. They don't need Hawks to, you know, tell them. And again, some of these upper heroes might know more than we think. We don't know. Anyway, what a great episode. This was fun. This was a fun, fun episode. 
anything else to add? No, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your enemies, and leave a comment. I really would like to know what anime I should watch next. I kind of want something a bit action-y. Um, it doesn't have to be a shonen. Uh, I'm not doing <laughs> One Piece or anything because those long butt animes. That ain't happening. And I'm also not doing Death Note because I watched Death Note in high school and I remember pretty much all of it, majority of it, so it wouldn't be a real true reaction because I remember it all. <laughs> I know sometimes I do that for a retro react, but it's just, it's a different creature. I want my anime reactions to be really, truly, you know, fresh. And so let me know. I mean, there's also, I, I'm interested in maybe watching Clannad. Um, also, Kyo and Annie, that's kind of uh, romance. I'm not really big into romance animes, but I might look into them for you guys. So just let me know what are some animes to look into. Also, I do have a my anime list uh, list of things that I plan to watch versus have watched. I need to update it for the watching one. But check those out, see what I'm hoping to watch, and we'll go from there. Anything else to say? No. That is... That is it. Hey, we might even, maybe we'll even do anime movies instead of a TV show. We'll see. Up in the air. So like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your enemies, and I'll see you next time.